Hey there, lone wolf. Yeah, you, we see you. The one navigating the maze of uncertainty in this ever-changing industry. You know, it's, it's funny how the chaos of a film set or, or even just prepping a project can sometimes feel like a distant memory. But here's the thing. Amidst the quiet and all the uncertainty, there is a beacon of hope, a lifeline that has the power to keep us afloat in these turbulent waters. We learned this in 2001 when the planes flew into the buildings. We learned this in 2008 when the economy took a tumble. And it's community and mentorship. In times like these, when the industry takes a pause and the future feels more unpredictable and somewhat shaky (laughs) more than ever, we believe in mentorship and community steps in as our guiding light. The industry often rewards people for keeping their knowledge, insight, contacts, notebooks, you know, call sheets close to their chest. Evidence of this is apparent in some recent co-pros posts that I know I've read, but we're here to promote the opposite. So grab your headphones, lean in close, and let's dive deep into the power of community and mentorship. Because in a world where the only constant is change, Having someone to guide us through the storm might just be the difference between sinking and soaring. So welcome back to the Producers Happy Hour. You're listening to Producers Happy Hour. I'm Lawrence Lewis. And I'm Sister Christian. And we're here to help you unravel the complexities of film and commercial production. Whether you're a seasoned producer, a production executive, a bidder, or a key part of the production team, we're here to equip you with the insights that I know Lawrence and I wish we had when we started out. So you can navigate today's production challenges, conquer those demanding clients, and unlock the magic to seamless production. All with a cocktail, of course. So grab a drink, say goodbye to the gatekeepers, and let's dive into the art of producing. This is episode 501. Those who do, those who, those who work <laughs> on episodic knows that that means we've been doing this for five seasons, our fifth year. A producer's happy hour. Yeah, it's uh, hard to believe, but these last five years have flown by and also been the slowest of my life. Oh my God. (laughs) And here we are, still in uncertain territories. (laughs) But we'll get into that. How are you? I'm good. I feel like, you know, I'm still nervous about how, where our industry is going, but I'm trying very hard to keep that uh, out of the forefront of my mind. Yeah. Same, How are you doing? <laughs> same here. I mean, I'm right there with you. I've been I've been fortunate enough to have enough work to, you know, get me through. I know there's a lot of people that are busy, but I know there's a lot more people that are not. There's so many people who are not busy right now. I mean, you could just tell. And like, I understand that the message boards have started yeah. to pop up with more jobs, but yeah. there's an interesting climate out there right now. There, there is for sure. So We're happy to be back doing this and reconnecting with our community out there. And that's what this episode's all about, community mentorship. Yes. Because Mm -hmm. it's needed now more than ever. But first, before we get into all that stuff, what are you drinking? Well, today I'm having a Ah. something by Lone River called a Ranch Rita. It's margarita style spicy. I love it. I love a ranch water. Definitely drinkable. (laughs) <laughs> what are you drinking? <laughs> I'm drinking a, a, a classic Tito's and soda, you know, uh, very basic. You went safe. I went safe. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time to prep something fancy. But I do want to talk about cocktails because like we did last mm-hmm. year, cocktail forecast for 2024, last year's was quite oh, yeah. accurate, right? There was yes, yes, the yes, resurgence yes. of all those 90s cocktails, Apple Teenies, Lemon mm. Drops. I love a Cosmo. Cosmo. Uh, espresso Martinis. Saw them everywhere. Mm-hmm. So the mm-hmm. cocktail forecast for this year is calling for more coffee-based cocktails believe it or not. So we'll keep seeing the espresso martinis and maybe Mm -hmm. some other ones. Also, savory cocktails. Oh, yeah, because I've seen a resurgence of like, hey, let's take a dirty martini and make it worse. Yeah. And (laughs) because I love a good dirty martini, but just a sad pickle juice. I'm like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Listen, picklebacks, sure. Like I will do a shot of whiskey with a pickle and I will will do all of that. But I'll bring one to the show (laughs) eventually. But I'm just not sure about a pickle teeny. I I I am not a fan of pickles. I do not like pickles, but... Oh, hot take. Uh, I'm Everyone. sorry, I just don't. <laughs> Lawrence. But fat washing is also going to be a, a trend this year. And here's my top cocktail recommend 
for Los Angeles. It's in Los Feliz. <laughs> I think you, you went there, sister. Mirate on Vermont. They have a cocktail mm-hmm. called El Guero. It is avocado fat washed. So it's a mezcal, kind of like a margarita, not as sweet, but it's green because it's been fat washed through uh, avocado. And it's one of the best cocktails in LA. And if it was a, if it was in Brooklyn, it would be made by a dude with a handlebar mustache <sighs> and suspenders. But first, Lawrence, have you ever wanted to take your commercial film production skills to the next level? We've got something special for you. We want you to join us for our very first in-person Producers Boot Camp. That's right. It's super exciting. You're hearing it here first. Yeah. On Sunday, April 28th, 2024, coming up very soon in Santa Monica, California, we, Lawrence and I, are hosting a half-day immersive deep dive into the art of commercial film production. I mean, talk about community and mentorship, right? This is it. We've finally got someone kicked us in the ass. His name's Jordan Brady. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, just fucking do it. So we're doing it. We're going to be in person and we're going to import all of our knowledge into your brains. Limited spots are available just to make sure that everyone gets personalized attention. It's going to be a very small group. So grab your seat now. And we're so fortunate to be presenting alongside Jordan Brady's commercial directing boot camp. This workshop is your ticket to mastering the intricacies of producing stellar content at top tier levels. That's right. Elevate your filmmaking skills with insights covering everything from deconstructing director's treatments to negotiating agency and client relationships, all from the producer's point of view. This course runs from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. four solid hours and is only $4.95. Hell, that's a bargain. Plus, it's the day after Jordan Brady's director's boot camp, so you can make it a weekend of learning and growth. And as a special bonus, we're offering a $100 discount to everyone who is participating in Jordan Brady's commercial directing bootcamp. Head over to producershappyhour.com slash bootcamp to secure your spot today. Do it. So I have really have been in what I would like to describe as survival mode for two years. Like it's just, it's been relentless. There's no forward planning. There's no anything because of the way that work has been and the uncertainty from commercial market to streaming, everything. short form content, like all that shit. Like it, everything is so uncertain right now that I don't know. The industry is changing as we know, as it always does. Yes. And we've got AI, we've got this, uh, all this instability in, in geopolitics and economics. Well, there's so much affecting us now. And then also the, you know, we've been talking about it for years, like how people receive their TV or their programming is different. So of course, how they're going to be advertised to is different. The 30-second commercial for national broadcast television is a dinosaur. And we have to adapt. And that's what mentorship and community helps people do. To get, you know, everyone is so, and I want to talk about this Copros thread. Everyone is so protective of what they do and and who they are and their resources, Mm -hmm. their network, their their, their, um, uh, insight into how they operate. It's so protected because everyone's so afraid of of uh, somebody taking their jobs because they have the information that they have where as in in, in uh, as opposed to that concept sharing information and getting a point of view from other producers who maybe do things slightly differently or actually maybe they only do commercials every once in a while and they also do reality TV, or they do experiential or they do live events or they do content can open your eyes to other ways of being more flexible as a producer and finding more ways to reinvent yourself. Yeah, 100%. Because I think that we belong to these forums for two, for multiple reasons in my, I do at least. When I need help, I ask. When I can help, I do. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. There's a there's a give and take here. And I can remember when I was transitioning from PMing to producing, half of the people that I worked for immediately cut me off because they were nervous that I would take their job. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm not, there's enough work for us to go. I'm like, what? I'm not looking for your job. No. <laughs> but but since we're all so self-taught that ne- like mentorship is, a, I think, a very valuable thing. And these forums that we belong to are very valuable because you can gut check yourself. 
Like, why live in your own spiral of anxiety? Oh my God. <laughs> like, like I'm, hmm, it's my favorite thing to do. But the defensiveness that I see sometimes on these platforms by people who are seasoned. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you remember what it was like when you were in this position reaching out for help? It's like the teacher always says, the only dumb question is an unasked question. And I remember, to your point, I remember being a, a new producer. I finally made the step up to producing. And <laughs> I was, you know, I had a very particular director and that's the only director I ever worked with. And I was... right didn't know, like, is this normal, this way, the way he operates? And I was like, how do other producers <laughs> handle this? And I just had no basis to right. to to uh, to work on top of, right? Because you don't, yeah. as a production and manager. how were you going to get that basis? And how was I going to, right. So I, I, you know, I started asking around, like, hey, would you, can I take you out to lunch? Would you be my mentor? And Mm-hmm. It, it was just like, what? I don't, I don't know what, uh, you know, it was a lot of kind of shrugged shoulders well, there, and like. Uh, well, also like, like what, what the, what is the expectation of somebody who is the mentor? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like what in the, and honestly, I've been thinking about that question and it's like, I guess I had what I wouldn't, what would be called mentors these days were my, produ- my producer friends that I would call mm-hmm. and, and, and ask advice about. So unwittedly, we we created a network of mentors and mentees, yes. <laughs> mentorees. Yeah, <laughs> is that it? <laughs> because because we actually were open enough and vulnerable enough to ask each other, "Is this right?" And and I want to get to this Copros thread, but uh, like that's why we created this podcast, right? It's mm-hmm. like let's talk about. Our, our, our what we do and how we do it, and let's build a library of resources for other producers that are coming up behind us. Because mm-hmm. without mentorship programs, without education, and sure, you can go to film school, but you're not going to learn how to produce a commercial. I'm sorry, no matter. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Go to USC, <laughs> pay all the money you want. You're not going to learn how to do with this. So, building a, a resource, a library of resources for for people like mm-hmm. you know, we were just talking to somebody the other day who turned down you know, a, a specific type of shoot because they never did it before. And it's right. like, you're a producer, you can figure out, you know, you can figure it out. And maybe you have to fib mm-hmm. your way through a few things. But also, we can put together a course of like, here's how you do a car shoot. Here's how you do a food shoot. Here's how you right. do, here's how you work with stunt mm-hmm. people. Here's how you do pyro. Here are all the things that you don't know you don't know when you have to do a retail clothing ad you know, like a dress for less thing where you've got to show, you know, 82 pieces of clothing. And how does that work? <laughs> There's no fear in sharing that information because it's all, it's about what you do with it. And yeah, I think that that's big. That's a big deal. Like it's about what you do with the information. Like you're not stealing anything. No. You're just telling somebody something, whether they listen to you or not, is like, that's a whole different story yeah, yeah. or apply the advice that you've given them in a way that is productive for them. There's no harm in sharing the info. No. And so this co-post that we keep talking about was a person who reached out on co-pros mm-hmm. very vulnerably asking for a mentor. And had signed the post producer. And it was like, okay. I think that some of the feedback that sh- that they had received was that, how can you call yourself a producer? That's an earned title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't know who this person is. You don't like, I mean, like I, I still at the level that I am, what, what would senior producer, executive, <laughs> executive producer, producer clean of all producers. Yeah. Like what is my, exactly like, I mean, what, I still absolutely get into situations where I'm like, oh shit, like, let me run this yeah. by somebody. Is this as dumb as what I'm sounding? Or have you ever heard? heard this before or has a crew member ever said this to you right. like those are still very valid things that i know i mean even though again you and i combined have done every single type of job that there is out there something's gonna come up or we're like oops don't know this oh yeah oh yeah all the time especially when you know more and more with all this technology and you do very technologically advanced shoots with the people that you work Goddamn with right. I do as well and sometimes you're <laughs> Tell doing the world. stuff that's not really been done before <laughs> or the technology is yeah, yeah or the technology is really new and um, you know <laughs> yes. and, and, and you're expected to know everything about it 
even though it's never yeah. d- been done before. And it's like, well, this is this is new technology. This is brand new, but we're going to figure this out and we're going to make this happen. And, you, you know, the industry does not let you expose that you may not know everything about something. Exactly. And that and they and it actually encourages you to lie in those situations, which makes me uncomfortable because I can't lie. But I know in the last job that you did, there was a whole week where we didn't even speak because that first week was um meetings that you had. Oh yeah. How to yeah. do something, where to do it, what's the best to do, what do I need to have it done? Like mm-hmm. all these things. And I was like, yeah, that happens on jobs. Especially because half the time we're teaching everyone around us how to do it, too. <laughs> We've learned it. We've learned it. 20 minutes it. later, we're telling people, this is what we're doing. And this is how it's done. <laughs> yeah. And that yes. is being a producer. Thank you for coming to yeah. our boot camp. Right. But I know that you also told me, like, when we sh- when I shared that post with you, I was just so, like, I know I forwarded it to you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this hurts my heart I right know, now. I know, because, I know. like, why in a public forum would you ever type something like that? And then it... And then you were like, you had wanted a mentor like early yeah, I in your did. producing career. And I was like, exactly. Like there is just like, <sighs> if you find somebody who is kind, who um, is willing to share their experience with you, that is just a gift. It is. Har- like harbor it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Nurture that relationship. And so we want, we hope through this podcast, we aspire people people who have the knowledge to open their hearts and be those mentors to the people that are coming up behind them. Because if we don't, this, this industry is going to be in trouble. The jobs are so compressed and so much more challenging than they've ever been. It elevates what it means to be a producer if everybody's educated and they know what they're doing on jobs. Yes. So it's not just a, you know, like we've said it many, many, many times that anyone can call themselves a producer, but that doesn't mean that you're good. You know, if we could just take a moment to elevate people to the status of being good at what they do, then I mean, shit. We've got ourselves an industry. And not being afraid <laughs> to ask for help or not being afraid to ask exactly. the questions, right? Yes. The whole, yeah. the, the, the gaslight of it all of this industry is that you're not allowed to ask questions because that shows weakness. Christian, I just got a calendar for a job and the timeline is totally crazy. It's so short. Like, how do you stay organized during prep when these timelines are truncated like that? There is so much to think about and no room for error. None. And to be honest, sometimes stuff falls through the cracks. I don't know. Have you ever bolted awake at 2 a.m. and screamed, humane society? Oh, my God. <laughs> or even like, oh, the caterer. <laughs> oh, my God. The director wants fog and I didn't put it on the friggin' permit. Oh, it's insane. <laughs> what gets me through these jobs, though, and even just my daily life, is checklists. I'm obsessed with checklists. That's the only way I can stay organized. Even though we've been doing this for years, a solid checklist is super useful. Yeah, even seasoned commercial pilots, like airline pilots who have been doing this for 25 years, <laughs> use checklists for the most basic things. That's how important they are. I'd like to think that my job is way more important than a pilot's job, but whatever. <laughs> so we did a thing and made a new pre-production checklist. This one is built for contemporary filmmaking methods, and, you know, it's also geared towards the way we're expected to work these days. Yeah, which is crazy fast. So don't let anything slip through the cracks. Get the pre-production checklist. There's a link in our show notes where you can grab it or you can just find it on our website, producershappyhour.com. Go get it. Another thing that is, you know, like I just want to touch on again, the survival mode is what I'm calling it over the last um, two years of just like surviving. And I, I find I find even how my social media is presented and my, because, you know, you have to be on it, kids. <laughs> and, or my LinkedIn or any of that shit. Like it, 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 it lists out what I've done not what I can do. And I think that that's part of, yeah, that's part of survival mode is like, yeah, I can fucking do this commercial with, you know, my eyes closed. I can produce anything, of course. I mean, just this list of things right here on a resume or my website proves that I can, but it only show, like, but it doesn't show what I'm capable of. I don't know if the, the, there's a disconnect here. And so I want to start presenting myself and for the jobs that I 
want or interesting to me, not just trying to get um, producing gigs. And I, I don't think that that's what I've been doing, but I think that that's what my, what the old version of having a website resume and a LinkedIn is. Right. I think that there's so much more out there. <laughs> what jobs have you done? Who have you worked for? It's not even that. It's like, what production companies have you worked for? What directors have you worked for? It's like when you, like for freelancers, you know, like anybody who's ever tried to buy a house and is freelance, the banks are looking at your shit going, okay, great. You did this blockbuster movie two years ago. Great. But what do you have coming up? Like, how can you prove that you're going to yeah. have income versus, <laughs> I think that the future is going to be so much more than just showing your resume. Yeah. It has to be. You have to be kind of omnipresent almost. You know, people want to I think so. see who you are, see what you do, see what your attitude is. It's, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. No, no. And I think that also you, um, you know, you have to be multifaceted these days as a producer. We usually always are, but that you have to be nimble enough to pick, to pick up and put down things because of how short our prep time is and how you can't start, you know, a production designer <laughs> until the very last minute and all of that. You actually have to be able to do other people's jobs as well. Yeah. I mean, I had to learn ske Just sketch up for a one little job. of their jobs, <laughs> you know, to like, it's rough to learn, but I was like, I got to put something together because I don't have the resources to bring on a production manager or an illustrator or anything. I just need to like lay some shit out to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And yeah, and, it, and this, I have to r remind us, this harkens back to episode 101. Do you remember what episode 101 of this podcast was about? No. Flexibility. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Do you remember that? That was our very first I, episode. And here we honey, are. I can't remember this morning. <laughs> well, but it's like it, we're just singing this we're singing the same old song in a new in a new melody because that's what it's all about. And we're just learning it in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. We're learning it in different ways because now it's impacting how we get jobs and what kind of jobs we're getting and what kind of jobs we want to position ourselves to get. And the biggest thing I hear from all of my friends that are in this industry that are so afraid of the future is my skills are non-transferable. And I, I want to push back against that because it's like, well, I don't know if that's true or not, right? We just have to understand how to interpret our skills in a new way and understand what those, what those opportunities are. And those opportunities lie in future technology. And, um, you know, I don't want to say AI, but... I but, mean, you have to make AI your own beast. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is, it's coming, it's going know, to happen. I know, and I, I don't, I don't want, I'm not going to embrace it because I, I, I or am I? <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean that, like, it's, it's, it is infinitely helpful when you are um, struggling to write something because you're exhausted. On the 16th hour. Exactly. Some it saves you from sending a snarky email. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, yeah. I did the, oh my God, Lawrence, I did this. I, I fed one of my emails into um, an AI program mm -hmm. and um, asked it to dial it back 20%. And then after, and then I got that new one. And then I said, can you make it 10% more corporate? <laughs> and it... <laughs> And it did. Yeah. yeah. Because I could not, I did not have the capacity of the brain power, the, the oh, energy or the, even the, the, the space to do that myself. Or not on your like, 16th hour of a five day shoot. Right. But it's like changing with the climate of everything, the entire landscape. I know we use that word a lot, but it's true because it's not just TV commercials, it's social media, Instagram, yep. TikTok, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, are you are you know are if if you are Gen Z looking to get into this industry? Are you do you have a website or are you just sending people to your Instagram to your TikTok? Mm -hmm. Are you mm -hmm. put, is that where you're putting your 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 uh, content that you've made? It goes to you know point more to the fact that like new points of view, different points of view of the different generations that are in our industry are important, 
And you are only mm-hmm. going to learn about that through community, through mentorship. Yes. And I, mm-hmm. I promise you, you know, to all of our seasoned producers out there, you start mentoring a Gen Z right now, you are going to learn some shit. You're going to learn some shit. You that are is my learn favorite some part. Yes. It's my favorite part about um, talking to, because I'm just like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> like, oh shit, I wish I would have known that when I was then or any of it, or just like how, how are, just to understand how people are communicating. Cause I know when I'm looking for a um, photographer, I mean, I get sent Instagram handles versus websites these days. Hands yeah, down. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm no longer looking at websites for photographers. No. I'm just scrolling through their social media. So being a mentor or just getting involved and sharing your ideas and your points of view and the way you do stuff with other people in this community, other producers who may take your job, you don't be afraid of that because, you know, you're creating an experience. You know, we say that so many, you say that, Christian, actually, you're the party planner, you're the party host when they show up on set that experience you create is 180 degrees different than the experience that I create on set. Yes. And 100%. that is that is the, the 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 sweet spot. That's the that's the sugar you're pouring on top of the whole thing and that's what makes you you as a producer. The way your crew feels, the way your agency or client feels or mm-hmm. or the way your director feels, it's a it's a very unique thing. So the nuts and bolts and your point of view of how you do your work sharing that with somebody who maybe calls themselves a producer, but maybe isn't at your level yet, shouldn't be a fearful thing. My ego tells me I'm so good that if I told all (laughs) these secrets to somebody, they would pop out and start to be able to produce at my level immediately. (laughs) But that's not true either. No, (laughs) no. (laughs) It just isn't. So getting insight from two, it's like like just from a couple of seasoned producers, I feel. I just wish I would have had it when I was first coming up, for sure. I needed so desperately to have uh, a senior producer in my life back then. Let me tell you the mistakes I made. A nice one. A nice one. I had a few who were were see you next Tuesdays. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) You have a little bit of an echo, your reverby sound. It sounds like you're in a new place. Are you in a new place? Yes, it has been two plus years in the making, but I have officially moved to California <laughs> boop, boop, from boop. New York. And I, I, you know, boop, boop. <laughs> and I have to tell you, everybody thought that I was going to be out here way sooner than I thought, but I have moved to California and I happen to be living in the desert. I have to say, I do miss the shit out of New York for all of you I, out there. I I'm bet. not giving up my home base of New York. I'm just, uh, yeah. It, it, it's been a, it's been a slow moving coup, but I'm going to take over California now. Yeah. In fact, you just did a job <laughs> in New York, didn't you? Yes. My first time in New York doing work uh, for about two years, I think, was the last job that I had done there. So yeah, it was um, so much fun to see everybody. I bet. So I hope to be doing more work there since I'm here now. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Christian. Thank you for the chat today. Oh, today was a good one. I'm glad that we're back at it, too. It gives me um, I, I, something to look forward to. I know how that sounds, I but know. it's just, I have been, I, I've worked, don't get me wrong. Yes. But it's nothing like the level that we were at no. two years ago. No. So I'm ready to get back at it for sure. Same here. So for everyone listening, producershappyhour.com slash bootcamp. If you want to come hang out with us for a half day after Jordan Brady's commercial director's boot camp, it'll be a blast. $100 off if you are participating in that. Otherwise, stick around for more podcast episodes because we're back every other Tuesday. We're back, y'all. It's going to be a good time. So Christian, how do people get a hold of you if they want you? SisterChristianProduces.com. It's old and dated. <laughs> Speaking so of. please, I haven't updated it in so long. It just looks like <laughs> shit from seven years ago. So have at it. So Lawrence, if they want you, how do they get you? I mean, mine's no better. LawrenceTLewis.com. <laughs> <laughs> I will update it at some point, you cool. know. All right. See you all in a couple weeks. Bye. Bye. 
thanks for joining Producers Happy Hour. If you got value from this episode, please don't keep it to yourself. Spread the love by rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. And let's be honest, we wouldn't have the show without you. Your feedback helps us to keep making this amazing content. This show is brought to you by our editor, Bren Russell at podlad.com. And Christopher Daniels, who is our branding expert and one fabulous treatment designer. So until next time, always remember... Making shit is hard. <laughs>